Welcome to yet another edition of AgriBaltech, a program focused on what biotechnology has to offer the Nigerian agricultural sector. I am Lara Afolayan. Farming remains a major source of livelihood for many Africans, as about 70% of them, mostly in rural communities, depend on it for survival. It is therefore surprising that Africa is rated as the world's most food insecure continent. Poor technology utilization is one of the major reasons for this. Scientists believe this situation can change for better with improved agriculture technologies like biotechnology, which could boost food security and alleviate poverty. A number of Nigerian farmers have already experienced what such technologies have to offer through field trials and are seeking the urgent usage of this technology for their farming activities. On the program today, we shall be filling the polls of the Nigerian farming community on this technology, as well as their expectations from it. The All Farmers Association of Nigeria will be sharing its thoughts with us on this technology, alongside farmers from parts of the country. This is not to forget messages and mails received from you, our viewers, on the GM technology, and as usual, we shall be attending to them. At this point, we get to see how scientists are telling Africa it could lose more to crop devastation by army worms if advanced agricultural technologies are not employed for farming. This is one of several stories trending on biotechnology around the world. African scientists say the fall army worm could further cost African economies more financial resources if they do not embrace technologies with the greatest potential to achieve agricultural transformation like biotechnology. The scientists say existing confined field trials on genetically modified maize in parts of the continent already show the crop could yield 52% higher harvest than conventional strains. The fall armyworm was first spotted in Africa two years ago, prompting fears of a humanitarian crisis as millions of families faced destitution and hunger. In Nigeria, Scientists say the application of biotechnology in an integrated multidisciplinary approach can be a valuable tool to addressing challenges in the country's food production. They say decades of documented evidence demonstrates that agricultural biotechnology is a safe and beneficial technology that could contribute to both environmental and economic sustainability. The scientists add that farmers get greater financial returns from using more environmentally friendly farming practices through biotechnology. In Argentina, scientists have used a gene scissors technology to develop a potato variety that prevents the crop from going brown after being cut. The scientists deleted the genome that causes enzymatic browning in potatoes and alters their nutritional properties and quality. They base this development on new breeding techniques that also allow for doing what was done for years through conventional breeding. The scientists are positive this will put an end to damages suffered during harvest, transport and storage of potatoes, which generates losses for the consumption and the industry as a whole. International not-for-profit organizations have been assisting Nigerian farmers with knowledge and practical technology solutions that address some areas of greatest challenge to them. Practical solutions to these problems have been presented to farmers through biotechnology-driven trials in parts of Nigeria for crops including cowpea rice and sorghum. This is to help farmers cushion the effects of climate change on their farming businesses, manage pests, enhance food nutrients and improve breeding methods. A cross-section of farmers who have had a feel of what this technology has to offer on trial sites across Nigeria share their thoughts on our InFocus segment. Mm -hmm. 
Africa's food demand is expected to double by the year 2020. This means the continent needs to improve production through better agriculture technologies. One of such technologies is biotechnology, which allows for the application of lesser chemicals such as pesticides and food production. It also provides for more environmentally friendly planting techniques that cut down on soil erosion, greenhouse gas emissions and water use. In Nigeria, these technologies have been introduced to farmers through confined field trials. At the moment, there are five crops undergoing field trials in the country. They include the port borer resistant cowpea, which has been modified to resist the Maruka insect larvae. Under the Maruka resistant cowpea variety trial, farmers get to see how the transgenic cowpea is able to shield itself from attack by the Maruka, and this makes it easier and cheaper to produce cowpea in areas where the Maruka pest is a big problem. This kind of uh, cowpea beans is a very good one. It's even the, the best one that's supposed to even replace the other varieties because it's earliness and also reduced cost of uh, labor in terms of insecticide application and reduced cost of uh, uh, buying insecticide. There are so many advantages uh, with this new uh, cowpea that is under development that it brought. One, the cowpea, this new uh, uh, cowpea, which is BT cowpea, is, uh, has, as I say, it has easy way to, to manage. One with only single cultivation, it's all weeding, you can get it. Uh, also, the number of spray we used to apply for insecticide it has drastically reduced to only two. That's based on our experience. With two spray last year, that's what we get. The BT Cotton's field trial on its part has shown participating farmers how the crop could resist the pink ball worm through genetic modification. The cotton value chain is looking forward to whatever can be done that will boost production. Because if we do not have enough cotton, then it affects even the generis, it affects the textile, the garment, and so on and so forth. So, but I mean, the bedrock of the cotton um, sector is the um, farmers as cotton production. So it will be very, very beneficial to cotton production and uh, uh, cotton uh, processing, at least those pr uh, primary stages. For BT cotton, I'm yet to see a scientific evidence that proves that it would degrade the environment. For instance, BT cotton, one of the um, um, advantages that we're hoping will come, uh, will, uh, will come through the imp uh, implementation in Nigeria is that we will reduce the number of times we have to spray for pesticides and so on and so forth. On average, we are spraying like uh, six times. With BT cutting, we're hoping that we only have to spray twice. So if you are talking of the environment, the less spray, the better for the environment, if we go look at it from that perspective. The field trial for the Africa Bow Fortified Sugum with enhanced levels of vitamin A and zinc targets malnutrition. It involves the use of bow technology to develop more nutritious and easily digestible sorghum that contains increased levels of nutrients. We all know that zinc and iron is problematic and we have, uh, is documented by World Health Organization, the number of people that are deficient and particularly vulnerable to these uh, women, pregnant women and children. And we know the position of sorghum in our system. Quite a number of people depend on sorghum for their feeding, especially people from the entire northern part of the country. And uh, many of them are resource poor. They cannot afford uh, animal protein and uh, vitamins and mineral sources. So it was conceived that if these essential minerals could be inbuilt into the major food which they eat, it will improve the health of the population. There are also ongoing field trials by the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, 
on virus-resistant and nutritionally enhanced cassava for Africa to reduce post-harvest losses. The project is to help cassava lines store their starch in stable forms long after the tubers have been harvested. There is as well a confined field trial on the nitrogen use efficient and salt tolerant New West rice at the National Cereal Research Institute, where Nigerian farmers say the results have been highly impressive. The problem that normally occurs is that at times if we, if we are farm in my farm, I am needing a fertilizers applications. At times, there is no money to buy it. This rice, the one that we are farming in our farm, this one is, is better than that one. Farmers are positive these improved farming technologies offer a valuable and complementary strategy for not just the development of better, nutritious crops, but varieties that will give greater financial returns on their farming investment. Currently, unfortunately, we're doing no more, uh, just on average of 400 to 500 kg per uh, hectare. But with BT cotton, we're hoping that the minimum will be 1.5 uh, metric tons per hectare, or even up to two tons. Immediately, that's an um, um, increase in weight for the farmer, which means more money, basically. And we're also um, I'm expecting that the quality will be good. Because aside from buying cotton based on weight, uh, weight basis, you also buy it based on quality. So if the quality is good and you have long staple length and so on and so forth, then you'll be attracting better prices, higher prices, premium prices. These farmers agree with scientists that safe and effective methods of food production through the genetic modification technology can go a long way in feeding the hungry and more nourished people in developing nations around the world. They feel it could also assist in reducing production cost, thereby cutting down on cost of food. The All Farmers Association of Nigeria is an umbrella body for farmers here in Nigeria. This association's National Vice President, Daniel Okafo, will be joining me here on set after this timeout on why he supports this technology and how he expects it to impact positively on the country's agricultural output. And joining me on set is the National Vice President of the All Farmers Association of Nigeria, Daniel Okafo, is here to share his thoughts on biotechnology and agriculture. It's good to have you join us on the show. Yeah, thank you, my dear. What challenges are peculiar to farming in this part of the world, particularly where pests and diseases are concerned? Yeah, in Nigeria, mostly there's a lot of uh, pests and diseases that uh, farmers is encountering in the, in the farm. And uh, a lot of people have already gotten uh, many challenges because of this pest. Sometimes, uh, like some years ago, you hear about the, uh, uh, the disease that attacked the, uh, the potato in Joss about four or five years ago, which many of them got, in fact, some of them, I think, I lost about two people during that time because they don't have any other thing to continue with. So you hear about the, the one that happened in a place called uh, Kano on Tabatus, about the middle, middle of last uh, year, uh, year. So a lot of uh, diseases have been the problem and pests uh, that have already caused a lot of uh, harm to the farmers. So what are we talking about is the solution. Okay. You say some technologies could help solve the challenge of pests and diseases on your farms. Could you talk about the technologies you mean? Like what we are talking about, you know, I said about the scientists in Nigeria, about what they're supposed to do. They need to do more research in, bi in biotechnology, and they do, they're they supposed to do something that will help the farmers. I think it's because the present farmers are suffering, what they need is what alternative like what we are talking about biotechnology, where you say uh, some of the, uh, the, the, the pests 
uh, you don't see the pests in your farm and they don't have uh, anything that will spoil your farm and the chemical you are using is no more as it is and it's less chemicals. That is the kind of uh, research I want our, our scientists to go on. Okay, what do you know about biotechnology? What can you say about biotechnology? Uh, biotechnology is a new, is a, a new system in Nigeria and we are on it. A lot have been said about it in those days that for past 25, 30 years that uh, people in the Argentina, um, China, uh, UK, US, many of them are using biotechnology. So we are, we are coming to it now. As far as I'm concerned, there's no bi biotechnology crops in Nigeria as of now. But the research is going on, unlike the cowpea, big BT cutting. So the research, we, we supposed to support this research. The trial of, the, of the, all the research they are doing, they do it with the farmers within their area of uh, the, this, like cowpea. So we are waiting to see that it's urgently released so that we can, we want to make money. We, the farmers in Nigeria, are not making money. And the, let me tell you about the tons. We are talking about in China, there's a, uh, 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 where you see cotton, they are, they are having the cotton in the farm, they are, their farmers makes up to 70, 80 tons per listing. In Nigeria, our cotton, how many, how many tons? Because of what? The science and technology, you cannot say that science cannot exist. Reason is that in science, as far as I'm concerned, as an educated uh, person, Without science and technology, the farmers or the, the anything cannot happen. I mean, the, you cannot move forward. You seem very excited. You look forward to you know, using this technology to farm. What are your expectations? What My, do you expect it to do for you and your members? I expected that, first of all, that our members should do, after the trial, we should do what we call demonstration. There's a demonstration farm that we are trying to have that we demonstrate. Because you see, when you give farmers any way, uh, something that will help in promoting his income or making him to be known or get his uh, income. So I want a situation whereby the farmers will use jeeps. I want a situation whereby the farmers will use a helicopter. Because we have gone to a farm in Brazil where a farmer is using a helicopter to work. And it's the same technology that we are, they, are, they, are, they are saying that it's not good, it's not that. So I want our farmers to make money. And biotechnology is a way yeah. the farmers could well, What I notice money. is with what we are, we know we go around to see and because we, as a farmers organization a leader, we need to advise them well. So if we did not go around and see exactly what is happening, and see that it's very, very, a lot of them, people are making money on it, and there is, it's healthy and there's nothing, nothing on it. So if, if we did not do that, what of the peasant farmers? Okay, so what do you have to say to farmers out there about this technology? Uh, I, I believe uh, we are not selling to the farmers alone. We are talking about the release of, the, of all this, the, the trial that they have done, because you see, we want to own the, the, the technology. How do you expect this technology to help enhance food security in Nigeria? Uh, that's the, what we are talking about, that the technology, the, both the challenges, I want everybody to look into it, to work together, so that it will work, that everybody will benefit. What we are talking about is benefit, and the healthy food, nutritional food, is very important. And if, if I believe the, the technology, as I see it in some places, if we, the, the, our scientists did a good work, we are going to, all, all of us is going to enjoy. And what do you have to say to government about this technology? That they should look into it and release whatever so that we can start getting something from it. And you know, let me tell you, they gave us an idea that pests and diseases is, is cut down, that you are not going to use more chemicals. And you know what is chemicals? If I spread chemicals in my house for two days, I will not sleep there because if I sleep there, there's a lot of cost, a problem. 
when we talk of farming, a farmer has a way of living. So this chemical, everyday chemical, everyday chemical, lessen their, their years on earth. So the, let me tell you, if there's something that will not let us use chemicals and still get the, what, the good results, I want the government to look into it. Well, thank you very much. I'm sure the government has heard what you said. Yeah, they may, yeah, they may not. Thank you very much thank you. <laughs> thank you. for joining me on the program. And that was Daniel Okafo. He is the National Vice President of the All Farmers Association of Nigeria, sharing his thoughts there on biotechnology and what it could do for agriculture in Nigeria. And he feels that it could change the fortunes of peasant farmers in Nigeria. We'll take a quick break and the program will continue shortly. Do stay with us. But it's not just the males who are interested in this technology, as female farmers also feel positively about it as well. One of such women farmers is Patience, who always speaks so passionately about biotechnology. According to Patience, she can't wait for the GM seed release so she and other female farmers can begin to enjoy its immense benefits. Well, Nigerian farmers have a lot of challenges, but I would say that um, we, we, in recent times we have a lot of challenges with, with, um, with pests. We have the fall army worm that is um, ravaging crop. And then we also have, of course, the basic challenges like weeds, um, access to good seeds that will be able to improve yields. Basically, if we have challenges with weeds. We spend a lot of money on chemicals, um, herbicides to be able to, to keep the weeds under control. What will happen for me if I had a GM or BT um, crop is that I would be able to spray herbicides on my crop. Now there's a, there's a herbicide that we would use which is called glyphosate which we all use. Now um, um, we all use glyphosate, all farmers in Nigeria spray glyphosate. It kills everything that is green. Now, what would happen is that if I have a BT crop, I could use that glyphosate and spray it later when all the weeds have come out of my farm and it will not kill my crop, but it will kill the weeds and I will have a better yield at the end of the day because my crop will have less um, competition with weeds. The main challenges we have as farmers can be taken away if we had this um, technology available to us. So I've spent time to research, to read about it, to, to, um, to look at the pros, and I haven't really seen any um, major cons. I've seen a lot of pros. And the truth really is that most advanced countries have used this technology, and they are growing crop enough to feed their people and export, and we are buying the crop, the excess surplus that they have. My final word to the government is create an enabling environment for this technology to come quickly. Um, we have challenges with drought. I mean, um, uh, weather forecast tells us that we're going to get a lot more drought. It's coming from different parts of Africa, it's coming here. If we have BT crops that are drought resistant, we will be able to, to withstand that. Then we also have challenges with armyworms. Now, um, if we had uh, varieties that are resistant to army worms, we will end up with better yields. At the end of the day, the country will be, will be self-sufficient in, in, in food. So, yeah, so that's my last word. And next, we take a look at the mails and the messages received from the audience. I begin with Victor Akombi, who sent us a message on Facebook. You say last week was your first time of watching you farm rice and vegetables with over 45 farmers in your employment. You are interested in genetic modification for food and you need more insight as the message is what spreading to other farmers and you therefore want to know where you can acquire knowledge or be trained on the technology. The Open Forum on Agricultural Biotechnology here in Nigeria has provided a response to your message, Victor. I 
I sincerely hope that was helpful, Victor. Dr. Rafael Abiodwa Debayo, an entomologist with the Department of Crop, Soil and Pest Management of the Federal University of Technology, Akure. You say you have worked in Kalpi on the field and in the laboratory, and you were glad to see the past episode on the Kalpi variety. Thank you so much. Prince Daramola Olaleye sent in a message from the United States. He thinks biotechnology is good and will give Nigeria food security if the country gives it all it takes to grow to maturity. Thank you so much for that. Another viewer feels that if we are not informed, we are moving towards deformation. He thinks the program comes at the right time with a clear sense of direction. He believes Nigerian farmers will soon be smiling to the bank with the availability of GM seeds. That's a very positive one there from that viewer. We apologize if we could not take your mail as we will do that in the next episode. And it's at this point we get to say goodbye on this edition of AgriBiotech, which was all about farmers and what they think about genetic modification. Let's know what you think also about the technology. Send in your mails on inquiries about biotechnology. The email address as shown on your screen is agribiotech1 at yahoo.com. You could send us a tweet at agribiotech13 or visit our Facebook page, Agribiotech on TBC, to drop your comments. I am Lara Afolayan. Bye-bye. Thank you.